that's one of the frustrating things about toxic fandom. They pretend like they're the real fans. But the fact is, all they're looking for are, are things to get mad about, things to get upset about. That's not what fans do. Fans get disappointed when something is bad. They don't expect it to be bad. They don't go into it expecting it to be bad. Yet these guys train their fans to go ahead and act that way. And that's not how fans act. Hello, and thank you again for joining me on one of these uh, videos as I as I cobble these together. Um, last one turned out, I thought, pretty good. I was pretty satisfied with that. So we're going to be doing the exact same thing again, more or less. Um, we're we're going to open up with Bobby and I doing a little discussion on Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, going over our honest thoughts, what we liked, what we disliked, breaking it down as eloquently as we can during a live stream. You know, limited format. You do what you can. And then we're going to cut over to, to the initiative. In that discussion, we're going to talk kind of a bit about uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, but also look a bit over the, the toxic fan reaction, kind of what these guys are saying about the movie and their angle. And then finally, we're going to break down an outrage video by Midnight's Edge. Midnight's Edge is a, a, a YouTuber I used to really, really like. I used to think they were kind of cool in how they broke down production issues. I felt like they had inside sources. And maybe they did at one point, but recently you can tell they kind of don't. And even in the video I cover, you can tell they've they've gone straight off the deep end. They used to kind of code like half their videos seem like um, they're, they're talking about uh, serious film stuff. And the other half is off the edge. And then this video doesn't wait too long just goes immediately into woke arguments about woke being bad and of course they're never clear about woke what woke even means so who even knows what they're saying you know whoever's watching can just fill woke with whatever they want in their mind but anyways yeah that that'll be the breakdown of this video uh and then if you stay tuned towards the end i'll go ahead and go over a, a, a little bonus comic book for you if you enjoy my content in general, just make sure to like and subscribe. The engagement is vitally important to all YouTube channels. Keep in mind, the Chuds have their audience uh, uh, weaponized and engaging all the time. So if we want to combat them at all, I need you guys doing the same thing. I need you liking this, this video. I need you commenting, hey, good video. Um, if you want to engage with the Chuds in the comment, you can or you can ignore them. Um, honestly, if you want to ignore them, you know, I'd say post great video. And then put your your and then put replies on mute or whatever. But uh, yes, uh, all that stuff helps a lot. Thank you. Let's see, uh, next, what does Nick have to say here? Hey, Bob and Bobby, I'm seeing. De oh, Deadpool Wolverine. That's right. That did come out. Oh wait, were we supposed to see that? I think we were. Where Fuck. We? Um. Yeah, uh, guys, I totally. We saw could reconvene that. I, in 24. I really, I really <laughs> liked when. Um, when Batman popped up, yeah, and yeah. and said, "I'm Batman," and he beat up Superman. I, I, I particularly enjoyed it when Steel showed up as Shaquille yes. O'Neal. Yeah, the best Steel, by the way. Oh yeah, the the best. <laughs> yes, of course, guys. We yes, yeah. we we, yeah. we 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 are covering Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, yeah. We're just having we, fun. We kind yeah. of I kind of wanted to wait till the end for, for no other reason because. Part of this is going to involve a spoiler chat. And if you're interested in just kind of our thoughts on everything, you can watch most of this and yeah. not get those spoilers. The spoilers will be at the end and you can duck out when we start saying spoiler warning. Um, and like and subscribe because we're thinking of you. But yes, yeah. Deadpool and Wolverine. God damn, this movie is destroying the box office. What, like $480 million opening weekend? Yeah, something ridiculous ridiculous like that yeah number one opening weekend for an r-rate movie ever and i saw people bragging about being the the number the 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 record-breaking best-selling r-rate mcu movie and i was just like that's a stupid standard it's the only r-rate mcu movie <laughs> it but, gets that honor by okay. default <laughs> okay guys yeah um but yes yeah well first ever r-rate mcu movie only r M MCU movie this year. Um, to give you my thoughts, I enjoy this. I don't think this is amazing. I have complaints. 
I think this is not as good as the first Deadpool, but a solid step up from the the second. And uh, Hugh Jackman fucking stole the show, frankly. Um, oh, I don't yeah. know what else to say. Um, yeah, yes, Ryan absolutely... Reynolds is great as Deadpool, but fucking Hugh Jackman owns this movie. I swear yeah, to he God. Yeah, he stole this movie. You did. Yeah, it like, was criminal. <laughs> like, I thought that he had reached his pinnacle in playing this character in Logan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah, he had he had some more to dive into with it. And when I guess yeah. it's getting in spoilers, so I won't bring up too much into his story. But um, I, I, I don't think it's too spoiler to say that this is an alternate reality uh, Wolverine. This is not a Wolverine we've ever seen before. This is not the Wolverine from Logan. I've seen some people say that, and it's no. This is absolutely not him. Um, but there's a reason why they do that, and we'll get. I will definitely dive more into it into spoiler territory. But uh, you know, I probably shouldn't dive too far into Cass because I don't know that 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 spoiler is in the, like the very first few minutes. Um, but yes, um, and yeah, we get a fabric. Also, something cameo. else when we get into spoilers, um, and maybe you could call this a complaint, which I you know I think it's a valid complaint. When I get into spoilers, we're going to be I'm going to be talking about like characters who are in this movie, not actual plot points. Say what you will yeah. about that. Um, uh, and uh, an interesting idea to to because a lot like Bobby and I even theorized that when they started uh, when they talked about Jennifer Gardner as Electra being in this movie, I was like, oh, I wonder if they're going to do like a Deadpool kills the Fox universe. Um, they could have called this movie Deadpool saves the Fox universe, honestly. Um, but uh, yeah, the the whole story is. Re- is essentially the TVA comes to get to Deadpool because he had the time travel thing from uh, uh, the end credit scenes of Deadpool two. They retrieve him and uh, they're like, um, Hey, uh, uh, your anchor being for your universe. The Fox universe is dead. Um, spoiler. It's, it's well, minor spoilers here. We're very early in the movie. We aren't yeah. into the serious stuff yet, but it's, it's, it's uh, Logan. Uh, Logan from the movie Logan, he died. He is the anchor being for your universe. Now your universe is going to die in about 10,000 years. Yep. <laughs> but it's my job to kill it off and it's taking too long, so I'm going to rush it along. <laughs> um, and that that's kind of the setup for the movie. And uh, Deadpool is working with Mr. Paradox and the TVA. Um, but of course, quickly, uh, he uh, Deadpool's response is to try to um, bring back Logan, which is like pretty much the opening of the movie, um, which is a complete failure because he is very fucking dead. Very he does not dead. bring back Logan. <laughs> um, like, uh, and probably yeah. one of the more impressive action sequences in the MCU that I've seen in a while. Yeah, was this there opening is- credit scene? Yeah, because um. I guess I guess already we're getting into it. So uh, I, how they presented well, so we that. We have gotten spoilers, and wow, I will say, could you watch this movie without seeing set Deadpool two? Yes, but I would actually say the most important movies. If you want to know what to watch going into this, the most important stuff to watch, and I'd say you don't have to watch any of it because the movie does set up pretty much everything. But the stuff, if you really want to know the background, Deadpool two, Logan, and season one of Loki. Yeah, I'd say that's your most important stuff. Um, what were you saying, Bobby? Uh, well, I was getting into like uh, how it, how the movie started, and uh, oh yeah, and feeling like I might start to get into some spoilerish material. Yeah, um, with just the so- opening credit scenes. So if you want to know if I recommend going to watch this, yeah. yeah. Like I like I said, I don't think it's as good as like I I hear people talk about how it's amazing. It's I don't think it's amazing. I think it's a very good movie. I think Hugh Jackman very good. the show. It, it's um, it's very much a it's win worth, for Marvel. I would I think. say it's a hundred percent worth watching just for Hugh Jackman. Yeah, Fucking amazing. I'd say it's um, definitely a win for Marvel. No, oh, yeah, definitely. Um. So yeah. Um. I guess spoilers. Yeah. So this is how your he, spoiler so warning ha- here. 
So mm-hmm. yeah, so how he fights them off is digging up the animanium infested skull skeleton of of Wolverine and placing a yeah. lot of the uh, parts all over his own body, including the claws. So yes, we get Deadpool with the Wolverine claws, but he fashioned Wolverine's arms and parts mm-hmm. over his hands. <laughs> um, gosh, and uh, the cameos in here are pretty impressive too. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, like I said, the biggest stuff to spoil yeah. would be who appears in this movie. And yeah. I got a banner all set up, guys. There's no excuse at this point. Yeah, so there's no excuse. At real this point, quick rundown. Yeah. I already mentioned Jennifer Gardner's Electra, which I felt mm-hmm. comfortable saying because that was reported like almost a year ago. Yeah, that um, was that was known. Um, there's the, there's quite a few that aren't known. Channing Tatum um, was announced as a playing a role, but not saying what. Yeah, He's Gambit. And he was. He is Gambit, and I will say I felt I did feel the joke of his accent wore thin for me fairly quickly. Um, we'll see. Like I, 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 I wasn't I could, super thrilled with him as Gambit. Well, yeah, I knew that there was like a project where he was announced and like or cited yeah. to play Gambit, and yeah, yeah, he would yeah. have been great at the accent, but I mean, it was still entertaining. It was it was nice to give him a uh, shot. Yeah, and it's Ryan like, Reynolds glad- played. Uh, Played played nice pool, which is a very age he aged Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, That's where you see Dog Pool and Lady Deadpool, who was Blake Lively. Yes. Um, I know the floating head Deadpool from the zombie universe. Yes. I know that that was Nathan Fillion. I did read that. Yeah, that's awesome. I read the credits. I read the credits because I had to mm-hmm. know. I was like, okay, is he in this? Like, he has to be in this. Um, uh, I guess the big one was uh, the one that I had no idea about, but I was so fucking pu- pumped when I saw it. Was Wesley Snipes as Blade? Yes. So I I wasn't sure about Channing Dame's oh. ca- Gambit, and then Wesley Snipes. Um, yes, that was awesome, and that was, that was the one like great. Yeah. this is almost all Fox characters in this movie. He's the only one that isn't a Fox character. But it still felt appropriate because I think Ryan Reynolds' first comic book movie was probably Blade Trinity. Yes. Not a shining moment for anybody involved. But no. um and they know, allegedly cool did not like back. each other. And yeah. I think they played off that a little it was like, I don't like you. Yeah, you never have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He definitely had fun with that. Because like you hear the story about how he got involved, and it's like, yeah, it sounds like a lot of the stories about them not liking each other is just like kind of bullshit but like yeah eh, they'll have fun with it and they or maybe they just mended it, so, fences yeah. at this point who knows but yeah it I'm seems sure like whatever point, yeah. history there was they're they're cool with each other at this point um uh let's see like uh, yeah so we got jennifer gardner's uh, electro we got channing tatum's gambit we got uh, uh wesley snipes blade i guess the other character to talk about would be chris evans who is very much in this movie i like how they teased it Oh, kind of they like, tease it perfectly. Like they are like, foreshadowing like it, it, it's so hard. And <laughs> and the way he's talking, it sounds like oh, that could be Cap. Yeah. And then just flame on. No, then, he's Johnny like Storm. As, <laughs> as he keeps on talking, he starts saying stuff where it's like, Is Wait that a minute. Cap? That doesn't sound quite right. And you can tell Deadpool's like, huh? What? Yeah. You're Cap, yeah, right? He, You're yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I think even, he drops in a swear word and Deadpool's like, What? And then yeah. Then Deadpool's like, Oh, he's gonna say it. And then he's good, and then he he, he's like, flame on it's Johnny Storm. It's like, oh my he's god. He's like, Avengers Assemble. He said it oh, with yeah. him, but it, it was just no. Oh. Yes. Yeah, at that. Um, I think oh, yeah. I was Henry Cavill's few... in this as well. Yeah, Henry Cavill as a version of Deadpool. Or, uh, a version. That. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great yeah. Uh, teaser. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The mini Wolverine. I, 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 yeah. The lost it at that. comic book accurate height <laughs> Wolverine. And then this, the, the, what was it? The Wolverine from the future that had the animanium hammer that has the claws that come out of that. Oh, that was Age of Apocalypse Wolverine, which was yeah. awesome. Mm. That, that, yeah. That one, I was like, oh, that, that was a awesome. cool Easter egg. Yeah. Yeah. So there's lots of Wolverines here. The Wolverine we get is not a Wolverine from a universe we've ever seen before, but is a Wolverine. And I love the backstory. And this is part of why Hugh Jackman just fucking steals this movie. Yeah, the backstory so, on this one is, uh... yeah, he, he so like Deadpool stumbles across him and like essentially kidnaps him to help him out. 
Um, and then he notices the suit and like Deadpool's like, oh my god, it, it took only took 20 fucking years. Fucking years. <laughs> yeah. That was that was the but, first yeah. wall break, and yeah, that was yeah. that's but nice. uh yeah, he drags him out and he's got the full proper Wolverine suit, but then it's revealed that it was a suit that he never wanted to wear. Um, and the he, you know, the X-Men always wanted him to join and be part of the team, and he was never willing to do it, and he turned his back on them, and then they died. And he, yeah. he always felt guilt over it. Um, and, and that's one of the strengths of this movie. So this movie, it, yeah, it's got plenty of jokes. It's plenty of funny. But it's 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 able to hit you with some pretty solid drama, too. Because Hugh Jackman is fucking selling the drama of just... Yeah. He's and... guilty. He was supposed to be an X-Men. He was supposed to be there when they need him, and he wasn't. And, you know, now that suit's just a part of him. He'll never give it up. Um, which is awesome. I do like that. Um, yeah, and he just sells that speech so well. And then you you also get Daphne Keene back as X twenty three. Fucking awesome! I just wish we got a bit more of her. We don't get that much, but no, no. I, I will say, like, if they want to take a break from from regular Logan Wolverine from a little bit in the MCU, and maybe just do an X Men with Daphne Keene as X twenty three, I'd be down for that. Yeah. Um. My my biggest complaint with her in this one is we don't get that much because like she's she's still selling the role very well. Um and now she's older, so she's actually, you know, not like really, really young, so easier to easier to work around. But well, we also got a lot of nice uh more we got even more cameos in this from uh, the villain in this and the bad guy, like Taylor Maine returning as a Yes, yes, as very Saber briefly, Tooth. yes. Toad, Ray yes, Park. Yes, we got Toad back Toad. as well, and then and, uh, Pyro. Yes, Pyro actually has a little role as well. Um, but yeah, we we also get all like we get the regular Deadpool cast back. They they don't have that big of a role. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, there's there's pretty much the X Force guys that that he resurrect he they brought back. Um, we don't get Terry Crews back, but you know they all have kind of minor roles. Peter is the most significant because I mean, let's face it, he was it's the heart and soul of X Force. It's Peter, yeah, yeah. The he is. team falls apart without Peter. Come on, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Deadpool needs a Peter. <laughs> we found that Actually, out too. Kind of, yeah. Like, um, well, I wasn't expecting Cable, and yeah, we don't get Cable. I was actually kind of expecting something for Domino, but yeah, she's not in this as well. Um, I think just Peter and Shatterstar of the X Force team um, coming mm -hmm. back, um, and that no Brad Pitt either, which is shocking. Well, we I wouldn't mean, have known if he was there or not. So. True, true. Maybe he was there. <laughs> yeah, maybe he was there. And I will say, um, Mar Marina Backrun's back as Vanessa, and they they do more talking about her character than I feel actually doing anything with her character. She's definitely just there for motivation for wade and there is a very nice moment at the end where like they kind of you know are they rekindling or are they just kind of going to be you know close again who knows but it, it's a nice moment um what did you think of cassandra nova uh i liked the character i wish they uh would have dove more into her but mm -hmm. I was actually like I wasn't sure how they would work her in. I thought they did all right with her. Um, the issue with her in this movie is that like she has always been more of a foil for Charles. Like when you read a comic book with Cassandra Nova, like it's a Charles stuff going on, um, obviously. Yeah. Um, but she worked well here. And yeah, she is one of those characters that is just insanely fucking powerful. Um, and I think uh, Emma Corrin. Um, um, the actor who who played I, I want to make sure I'm getting this right because I kind of sworn um, I read that they were non-binary I think so I, I'll just try to say they them to be correct because I'm pretty sure um, anyways they, they do a great job um, I think they're they're a very terrifying presence and they work well but yeah um, I guess other thing to let people know, if you're looking for MCU in this movie, there's actually not a whole lot. Um, in fact, 
I can only think of one character from the MCU that's in this movie. If we're not talking about like archive footage. Um, and yeah, he's right there. It's, it's happy Hogan. That is, that is MCU mm -hmm. happy Hogan in the movie for like one scene. Um, most movie doesn't even take place in the MCU. Uh, um, yes, I guess yes. we could say uh, they're pro. Oh, and there's also the one TV. agent from the Loki series. Uh, just to get back with that, uh, I, I did some checking. Uh, it, their their pronouns are she and they. Oh, she and they. Okay, okay. Mm. All right. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a fun movie. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, if you if you're a fan it. of Deadpool or Wolverine, that you, and you should go watch it. I will say that this one was also like a very packed house for me. Like it didn't yes, start it was as very packed, packed theater, for me as well. but it filled out very fast. Yeah, I like. I was actually shocked. I went to get my tickets uh, earlier in the day, and the theaters were pretty full. I still was able to get decent seats, but I think it was a theater that they they set up for it last minute because all the other theaters were filling up. Um. Yeah, this is this was a busy weekend. Like when the numbers came out, this movie was doing really well. I was not remotely shocked. I mean, I expected it to do well, but um, holy shit. Um, hey, usually these summer blockbusters don't come out. They come out like the first weeks of summer, not like so late in summer. Yeah. I mean, this is definitely the biggest movie of the year, without a doubt, so far. Um, yeah. I, well, I guess the big um, movie for um, to open this summer was actually The Fall Guy, which... I mean, it was a fun movie, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't blow up any records or anything. Um, yeah, yeah, so it overperformed. So it was uh, Deadpool and Wolverine was projected to domestically do 205, and it brought in uh, 278. That is fucking good. <laughs> That's really impressive. Um, yeah, that is really good. Just over overperforming your your projections at all is is an accomplishment, but that's almost like overperforming them by almost a third. That's wild. Yeah, this is this movie's huge. Like I said, it already broke the record for biggest box office opening for an R rated movie. Will it surpass Joker's? Joker just made over a billion dollars to become the most successful R rated movie ever. Do you think he'll surpass it? Probably because I think it's got a solid spot. It's already yeah. almost halfway there. Um, and I, I knew do know opening weekend, it's gotta be like solidly. It's got a decent shot at being the number one R rated movie ever. As, I guess that's what my I, point I, is. In this I, here. <laughs> I, I have a confession about Joker. Yes, I think it's overrated. So, fun fact I actually think Joker is a pretty good movie, but I also 100% agree. I think people talk about like it's the greatest fucking thing ever. And I'm like, it's fine. It's, it's okay. Good. It's yeah. okay. I mean, yeah. He's the I'll Joker. He's not Alex DeLarge. We try we'll, to make we'll him be able to dive into it more deeply when we get yeah. to it later in the year. But I will yeah, say, that's all that. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Joker is one of those movies where um, I feel like it's like an art movie for people who don't usually go out and watch art movies. So, like, they're like, watching it thinking it's like the greatest thing ever and it's like it's it's just a well done movie guys it's nothing amazing yeah, yeah um, it, it's like uh, go to a film festival sometime i swear go yeah yeah i mean I, I i feel that they try and do too much of a character study of the character yeah and they try and make him alex to large that's mm -hmm. that's that's what i think of it but yeah get to it later i mean we could also dive into how like a lot of it's a lot like Taxi Driver, and Taxi Driver is a better movie. <laughs> yeah, you. We, I mean, yeah. we can really explore it when we get to it. But yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Travis Bickle is a complexing character. Yeah, he's a complexing character, but one of my favorite in cinema. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah. Um, I mean, he's up there with Alex awesome. DeLarge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes, not he true. Was. That's not true. You know, See, I, because I, yeah. Movies are like real life in the sense that yeah. uh, they have no inherent meaning, that it's up to you to uh, find what the meaning and uh, apply it, you know, how you see fit. 
Boom. Listen, if you think it makes everything meaningless, then like, I don't know. Like, I, I have to call into question whether or not you're even a comic book fan at that point, because holy crap. Oh. And it's it okay if you're not a comic delivery. book fan, but like, it's fine. But like, know the medium uh, of adapting. I mean, there are people that believe that like multiverse theory is a real thing. Uh, the multiverse is a real thing. So that would mean that like nothing means anything, which is true. Technically, yeah, like in, inherently true, nothing yeah. has any just like innate uh, meaning. But, you know, see, Zach, he's got the good take, right? Like, mm, yeah, it's all part of an interconnected thing. And it's like there's still and then there's still the distinctions mm -hmm. between it all. Right. That's that's magical. It's magical. Mm -hmm. What's um? I don't understand the statement. What would what would make the multiverse meaningless like what would be that what is the do we understand what that even means like let me show you the, post, the post that i saw that had me okay. you know kind of fixated I, on it i wonder if same when i saw because the one i saw it said like these these events are now meaningless and it was the death of tony stark and the death of uh, uh logan that's it in, that's in the logan one. that's the one yeah and yeah. i was just like that no why are they meaningless <laughs> though like why why are they meaningless now? I mean it, it would be that like that could maybe be the case if they were actually the same literal character. But I mean, yeah. even still though, even still, like somebody made a point of like uh that one of the worst things about a multiverse movie, interconnected movie universe is that that's had on effect that it's had on general audiences is that people think this way when it's like the only thing that should matter to you when you're watching a movie is what's happening in the movie at the moment you're watching it. Yeah, are you like, enjoying the movie? Are you enjoying the story I it's mean, telling? And you can tell that they're not somebody that was a fan of horror movies in the 80s. Because, like, holy shit, man. They, there was no... They did <laughs> right. not respect canon in those things. Like, Jason... I mean, be without blown spoiling to bits it, don't they movie address and... this Logan thing at the beginning of Deadpool? It's like the first gag they really... Did. I don't know. I yeah. haven't seen it. <laughs> so Yeah. Well, they address it at the beginning of the movie. I'm not going to say yeah, how, it, but it is yeah. addressed at the beginning of the movie. So... I mean, it's so early on that if I were writing stuff for the newspaper, I wouldn't even consider it a spoiler because it's so early on. And... I mean, it's like what the first or second scene in the movie, I believe. Well, I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd known that I he's, think it's what he's doing from, when we first see him. <laughs> yeah, he's like from a, a universe where he's like the worst one, right? Worst yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, that's it. Like this Wolverine yeah, is just another he Wolverine. He's not that. the same. Like, and on yeah. top of that, the Logan Wolverine isn't even the same Wolverine. They established that that's not the same Wolverine that we know that's from like, the earlier moves. So, the Logan yeah. Wolverine is almost a one movie character, to be quite mm -hmm. honest. So it's almost did that did that ruin the Logan other Wolverines? So separate. <laughs> <laughs> did Logan ruin the other Wolverines because it's a different yeah. version of Logan? Like, I mean, I think I think I'm that version in this universe. There's probably a much this better fucking this comic Marvel, ruined so. everything. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's ruined every Wolverine comic that came before. It. Yeah, it ruined every All Donald Duck comic book. Is there a certain? We've talked about this a lot over the years. Um, hate to say that it's been so long since we've been talking about it, but um, why do people think new versions of characters somehow diminish the, the version that they love? Why do they think that those two things are connected together? Because they're not really, if you think about it. I mean, they might share the title, but every single I mean, writer, every single artist that comes mm -hmm. on board to a character changes that character a little bit. So they're never truly the same character all the time. They're always slightly yeah. different than the previous versions. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, always the interesting thing is to, you know, get a good artist in there and just see what their take is, you know? I mean, say, for example, you like Frank Miller's take on a character, right? You say, yeah. that's my favorite version of that character. Does that mean that every version that came before that one is now destroyed because the version you love is the better version and that everybody that loved previous iterations of that character, fuck them, fuck their lore, fuck the fidelity. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's such a mm -hmm. weird way to look at it art. is very weird mm. um now some takes about the multiverse going on here i'm sorry it's mm. just like a lot of them i don't know i don't think that there's a in like any it, it's all just a matter of what you do with it with the story right like it, yeah. this, this take on a multiverse could be terrible this you know could this take could be everything everywhere all at once um yeah I mean, yeah, without that, a multiverse, we would have. Go ahead, sorry, Bob. 
I was just gonna say everything everywhere all at once sucks because it it, it spoils all the characters by revealing there's there's versions <laughs> with hot dog fingers. Just, right, just troll ruins it and rocks. They're rocks yeah. as well. They're yeah, they're rocks. With yeah. All rocks. What a terrible um, movie. <laughs> see, Scott, Scott, what I was just thinking, it's insecurity, right? Like they can't stand the idea that they aren't working. We all aren't work, working from the same set of assumptions, and it's like also. Are, yeah. uh, are, were you talking about like legacy characters a minute ago? Sorry, who? Yeah, like I mean, we, we like could, we could, Spider-Man. yeah, I mean, we could talk about them. I mean, I'm good with that. Um, um, yeah, I mean, well, because I mean, just in terms of that, like people that they, they do try to say that, uh, people say that like Miles Morales makes Peter not special, right? Like he's not special anymore because Miles exists and he's got an extra couple of powers too, right? And it's like, mm-hmm. if that's what you think makes Peter Parker special, then I don't, I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, well, but also, you know, I've made this, I would point argue in, that. I would argue that Miles does make Peter special. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like legacy enriches the lore of characters. I've said it before. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at Batman, uh, who started out solo guy, but now he's got his whole Bat family, mm-hmm. and like all of them have these these in- entrenched relationships with each other. You know, very nuanced relationships with each other, and it enriches the lore, enriches the story, and then they make each other better, and then they make Batman better. You know what I mean? They make him less of a you know isolated dickhead, and he like. Uh, you know, I just I just feel like it's it's a really silly take to think that adding legacy to a, a character somehow takes anything away. Well, I mean, in that in this to add on to your comment, Dane, wouldn't Miles validate Spider-Man's like solidify who he is as a character by being such a huge fan and wanting to be that character? Because if you think about it, nobody wants to be Cockroach Man, right? They don't want to be co- they want to be Spider-Man or they want to be Batman. Mm-hmm. These are characters that are so popular that the the people living in that world want to take up those mantles and be those characters, yep. you know? So in a lot of ways, it validates how popular and meaningful Spider-Man is as a character um, within the world they exist in. So, Well, that actually brings us to uh, something here. You might have seen it on Twitter, but I uh, might as well show it now. It's um, relevant, but... Steve Rogers is indeed Captain America, and Miles Morales is Miles Morales. This statement does not say that Sam Wilson isn't a Captain America. It doesn't say John Walker isn't a Captain America, or Isaiah Bradley, who was retconned as the first Captain America, isn't a Captain America. It doesn't say that Bucky Barnes isn't a Captain America. It just says... What's so stupid is he like, you can tell he thinks he's so fucking clever for this. Yeah. You know? And his fans paired it as if it is clever. When in reality, it's literally just him saying, yeah, I'm a fucking grifter, dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. Steve Rogers is Captain America, and the same goes with Miles Morales. He is indeed, again, Miles Morales. He's also a Spider-Man. I mean, it's it's him admitting what he's already admitted, but, like, much more boldly than he has before. <laughs> I mean, that right there, if you're somebody that retweets him whenever he says that shit and you get into his replies and start engaging with his fucking idiot fans or something this tweet right here should tell you don't yeah because he thinks you're an idiot period wow this month i've made a thousand dollars on twitter thousand dollars i'm making a thousand dollars off of miles morales tweets shit i would do for free that for one is america that is capitalism fucking it's fucking hilarious and you can do it too. You can do it too. You can do Miles Morales tweets. You can do microaggressive they're racist like tweets too. engagement mm-hmm. gold. They're engagement crack. So yeah, I made a little public service. I used to now. sell toxic poison to kids to feed my habit and make money. And I went to jail. Now I sell toxic poison to kids to feed my habit and make money on YouTube. Yeah, I, the funny I, thing I, about I, that was I, the I, the false narrative that he would do it for free. That's not true. It never has been no. true for him. And this is what I tried to say in my video when I talked about that clip was that him saying that is that plausible deniability that they always do whenever they come up with some sort of like dumb 
scam or grift. And they're like, oh, well, I do this because of blah, blah, blah. And I would do it for free, blah, blah, blah. But it's never been for free. Even when he was tweeting it out, it was linking people Before to his months. content on YouTube. Yeah. Right, exactly. I mean, so yeah. it's never been for free. There's always a reason why he's done it. He's not sitting around like some kid in a room, like making edgy tweets. He's everything I mean, is some sort of a funnel to his content. And he knows how to do that. He's been doing it very well for a long time. I mean, look at his early content. Yeah, it didn't get the views, but it wasn't like this. It wasn't toxic like this. It was just like normal nerd chat. Yeah, now, yep. now, like I, I wrote over here on my notice where that video was going is, do they just sit around and come up with like loopholes on how to be or how to say racist things? I think so. Is that what they do? Yeah, they sit around, they go, how, yeah. how can we say something racist, but also funny? about sam wilson that well, will get about, views yeah, and think about what we do right like they never are i mean think about how we are we're like one of us will will think of like you know we'll kind of have a come across like a new argument or a way of framing things to kind of show that they're grifting or they're bigots or whatever and then we'll, we'll either like put that in a video and then you know present it to the others among us that way or we might talk about it you know uh, uh in the discord or whatever and like you know oh yeah that's a good point you know what i mean like a, it's mm -hmm. just the inverse of that i think that's just what they do like yeah but i mean like like how like i don't know like i i don't see have you seen um there was a clip i don't want to get super political but i want to kind of draw the parallel here because it does all sort of tie together of like steven crowder talking about kamala have you seen that clip yet no oh, God, it's no. I okay anyway yeah. the clip is just full-on like microaggressive it goes from microaggressive to full-on racism in that clip and i feel like as we go through this year, things are just going to keep continue to escalate with this stuff. And we all know that these channels sort of pull from that space as well. Like they, they're all cut from the same cloth. Basically. It's just, they use the yeah. fandom to build outrage and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I just can't imagine sitting around all day long thinking about how to stealth racist stuff. You know what I mean? Like I, what kind of existence is that? I mean, I know we, we mm -hmm. you know, that we talk about being well, clever mean, and stuff, but I mean, that's that's literally brain rot. It's just I mean, absolute that, garbage. That's what YouTube really monetizes, though. Um, and then, you know, you get these these idiot fans who will just follow it and think, yeah, oh, it's not actually racist. And it's right. And if I may I mean, inject a little nuance that yeah. um, it's uncomfortable, but I, I think it's something mm -hmm. I've definitely learned since I've been doing this. Like there there are some of them who legitimately don't think they're racist because what their idea of racism, like the, you know, the, the bar for that is like absurd. And yeah, you know, I, mean? I don't but think like, there is a bar for that Dane though. Like, I don't think so. If they still think that, that what happened with like George Floyd and stuff, was not somehow ra racially motivated? Then what is the bar for them? To the, to them, it would be like, if the guy was saying the N word while he was murdering him, you know what I mean? But he, like, he, I don't even think that's, I don't even think that I think they would find it. Yeah, you're right. Too. I mean, you're right. They're probably mm -hmm. there. The bar is, is fluid. It, and it's ever ever shifting right but like no i mean that, that's that's how uh, generally that's how what i think bigots occupy their minds their time with is is trying to justify bigotry in any context right so to where yeah. because they don't they know it's bad you can tell that by they they don't mind being called all kinds of shit but you call certain ones a bigot or a racist and they get real mm -hmm. upset about that shit right because they truly know they are see that's the thing is i don't think they necessarily don't think that they are i think that they are trying to trick themselves into believing that they aren't that's like, right i mean yeah, yeah. that's right. you know like, I think that they honestly think if I say Captain African American, then that is in fact stating that he is African American, but right. it's also calling him a slur without calling him a slur, which is See, what the, is the reason that they doing, think so. the thing that they add to it that I think that I was going to say is that what he, what he thinks he's doing there, I believe, is uh, he's pointing out our racism because we're taking offense mm. to it as if there's something bad about saying he's Captain African American. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's this weird fucking you know ba double backwards fucking logic that he's using to you know insulate himself. But I mean, it's it's clearly, you know, is it is it inherently racist to say Captain Captain African American? No, of course not. I'm saying it right. We both said it. We'll all say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, in in a in in a conversation about the topic, obviously, it's not the same as like using the well, N word. But, but that's why know. I put the suggestion of bigotry in that video right. clip, right? Is because he's not literally doing bigotry. He's he's he knows that we think he's a bigot. So mm -hmm. by saying the things that he says that aren't actually bigoted, yeah. people get frustrated by it anyway because we know what he means. We know the, the intention behind it, right? So then, yeah. then he can kind of laugh at us because there's not any literal proof that he's being an actual bigot. And we're the fucking crazy leftists mm -hmm. or whatever. That's that's the game. Yeah. That's the scam.
Well, we also know he's doing it for money. I mean, that's the other yeah, thing oh, yeah. is, is he is like, at the end of the day, um, I don't care if he sits around being, oh, those damn black people. Like if he wants to sit around and be mad about black people, I don't care about that. The, the issue that I have is that all of that he's posting up on his platform. He's using his his reach to, to kind of get this microaggressive stealth racist shit out there and make money off of it at the same time. That's the part that kind of bugs me about it because people always say like, you know, what is it you don't like about these, uh, you know, about these channels and these content creators? It's, it's the fact that not only do we not know, or we can't prove or disprove whether or not they truly believe the stuff they're saying, but they are incentivizing hatred with, by being capitalists. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they, they want to make money off of saying and doing bigoted stuff. And that mm -hmm. to me is egregious. That's that's and, what I, my issue I've always had with it. Well, so and I always thing, viewed like nerd spaces as being way more like open minded in general, like accepting of mm -hmm. more people, accepting of, of all this stuff. And to to have nerd spaces and then just say, oh, it's only for like white men or whatever. Mm -hmm. it just it bugs me. Like, I find that so offensive just by its nature. Mm. I mean, so like the thing that they do is, you know, pretty much everything that they do is about you know removing or distorting or manipulating context and that's all it is is you know that we we know that what he's doing is is uh racially motivated because of context without context he's just saying that he's an african american basically or whatever you know what i mean and right. mm -hmm. uh, that's that's the yeah, i don't know if a lot of their audiences are just too dumb to understand context is, should be applied to things that seems to be the case with the right in general um or, or they just they get off on fucking you know pretending that they don't understand. I don't know because we've got a we've got a dipshit take here that's relevant to the <laughs> thing we're just. I know which about. one it is. Mm -hmm. I know which one it is. Mm -hmm. okay. So, first all, <laughs> um, if you were to read some comics sometime, my man, because you got some opinions here that on things that that you know, it, yeah, it's in the MCU, but it is inspired by what happened in the comics first, right? Yeah. Okay, so having been reading comics for a lot of my life, I was reading comics at the time uh, that. Steve Rogers was assassinated and in the immediate aftermath, Bucky did become Captain America for a short time. And the way it was written by Ed Brubaker generally agreed upon to be like probably the best Captain America writer to ever do it. Um, you know, he, he wrote it so that uh, Bucky, he, he tried it out. Cause that's what, you know, it's what Steve wanted. That's what Steve had mm -hmm. left a, a note saying, you know, make it, make this happen. This, this was not too long after he was uh, the Winter Soldier and he'd become unbrainwashed by the Cosmic Cube, right? So, like, he's still getting used to just being a, a regular dude. And, uh, you know, but nonetheless, he struggled with it. He struggled believing in himself. He had a lot of guilt over having been a fucking assassin for several states for several decades, right? And he just, uh, he, he couldn't do it. He didn't want to do it. And this was not, uh, and it wasn't like they, they said, okay, you can't do it now. Give it to Falcon. That's not what happened. Uh, it was another several fucking years before it came up again where there was a possibility for another Captain America. And uh, yeah, it makes perfect sense to be Falcon, actually. Not because, you know, mm -hmm. fuck a metal arm, dude. Like, talk about the character, the actual character, not the well, shit yeah. that he has on his body, right? Like, the character of Sam Wilson is somebody who has always been a partner to uh, to Steve Rogers. Not a fucking, uh, you know, not a sidekick. He's always been a partner. That's always been explicit. He's always had his own, you know, way of doing things whenever he feels the need to go his own way. You know, he's done that. Steve respects that about him. And he's somebody that, uh, you know, generally lives to the to the uh, values of Captain America as in like not murdering people as an assassin for years and, and not, you know, and he also just doesn't have that fucking weight around his neck of being an assassin uh, and, and so on and so forth. And so, like, if you actually read some comics, man, it makes far more sense for Sam Wilson to be Captain America. Uh, then it does Bucky, but you know, and then uh, the last part of this, Disney wanted their token black man. Do you have evidence of this? Because if not, you're just a racist piece of shit. Just saying stuff. You're just repeating garbage, man. Because like, do you know that that's what Disney's choice was? That that's why they made this choice? No, it's based on characterization. It's the writers chose this in the comics. Disney Marvel chose it because it's based on the fucking comics. You dipshit. Get the fuck out of here. Well, also, I think it's also, I want to add, um, so Steve Rogers, do you think what made Steve Rogers special, what made him Captain America was a serum? Like, right. talk about misunderstanding the character. I also want to point out that I'm very glad that you admitted that you would be okay with another white man being Captain America, but not a black man. Thank you for 
admitting that in the chat. <laughs> I do appreciate that because the argument has always been Steve Rogers is Captain America. He's the only person that can be Captain America. But then there's also an argument that Bucky could be Captain America. But for some reason, Sam can't be Captain America. Yeah. So yeah, it's notable. And then, and this year right here, no, man, no, I don't believe that we should fucking write our stories and uh, based on what racists are going to say. No, I don't I don't think that's right at all. Uh, why was it okay for the flash? Why was it okay for Green Lantern? Why was it okay for, I could fucking go on a, well, I mean, I, I, I want to kind of circle back earlier to um, something. Um, we were talking about like, like the multiverse earlier and I wrote this down. I didn't get a chance to say anything about this, but we wouldn't even have the characters we have today if the multiverse didn't exist all the way back when they rebooted the dc universe with the going from the golden age to the silver age characters because mm -hmm. we've already stated those are two different versions of the characters so the version of batman the version of batman that supposedly everybody loves started after the original batman was rebooted into what we got in the second generation so we know that the, the only reason we have the characters we have today is because of the multiverse they just didn't realize it when they were doing it so sorry so Bob. i'm gonna answer <laughs> one more here but i can tell that because we, uh, we've responded to one that there other the others are getting froggy so you know trolls you know how they be um what i'm gonna say is uh, in response to do, 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 this one um you haven't read any comics. I know that for a fact. If you want to prove me wrong, you can come on to my show on Friday, email me, hit me up on Discord. Uh, you know, we can talk about what comics you've read and you can make a case why you think that the writing and the character are bad. Uh, which writer are you talking about, man? Just every single person who's written him since he's, he's existed? Is that what you're saying? Because that's pretty fucking stupid. Uh, but you know that you haven't read any comics and, you know, there is diversity on this panel, actually. Uh, so fuck off. Let's check this uh, thing out that I got right here. Relates to that. Um, <laughs> let's actually just mute it instead of playing the music. But yeah. So this is, uh, you know, the most very straight, not woke at all. None of that gay DEI filled stuff movie ever. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The true. way the studs are acting. It's got nothing. Nothing that in other context they would have said anything about. Well, you know, if the Acolyte was making these jokes, they would have attacked it. So this was the pre-stream reel that would have played had my internet gone out right at the start of the stream. <laughs> um, you know, but that's just a popcorn bucket. It's not the movie itself, right? So. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta fist that popcorn bucket. <laughs> Whoopsie, whoopsie do. Got a non-binary actress playing a gender swap character. Got another gender swap character. Uh, got another gender swap character. S three that oh, I know dear. of. And I haven't seen the movie. Uh, you got uh, you know a gay couple, a Japanese woman. Woke, wokey woke woke. Whoa, oh, bonus. People of color and a disabled woman. That's a lot. Uh oh, uh oh, problematic right here. The main <laughs> character, pansexual. What? This is from the first movie. <laughs> <laughs> getting uh, pegged getting pegged right and then there's just these you know several of these moments in the uh, deadpool one and two um where <laughs> this one in particular is pretty funny um <laughs> i'm gonna tell you right now the the queer community is kind of doesn't know what to do with this movie Deadpool I bet. Three. I mean, because I was trying um, to, I was trying to place it too, thinking like it's it's not really making gay jokes about gay people, but it's also not necessarily not doing that. Well, the, right. Like, I, so <laughs> there's like okay, so I am in the camp of like I understand who Deadpool is. Deadpool is as a character. So mm -hmm. there was nothing out of character for, from him in the movie. Like everything is pretty much on brand for the Deadpool that we know, the one that makes jokes about everything and anything. I don't. I don't I don't think Deadpool takes most things seriously, except for his relationship. And even then, that's obviously they've made jokes about that as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's some stuff in there that I could see being problematic. You know, I yeah. mean, obviously, uh, the jokes about 
uh, I'm trying to do something so we don't get in trouble here. The joke he makes about being in the Boy Scouts and the Scoutmaster. I don't know. You haven't seen the movie, Dane, but there's a joke he makes about Scoutmaster Kevin at the end of the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also a joke when he gets his costume made about being, um, basically assaulted, uh, by the guy making the suit for him and things like that. There's, there's jokes like that, that if, if it were not Deadpool and it were one of these, oh, sorry. If it were, if it were not Deadpool and it were one of these, um, shows and movies that, that the Chud channels didn't like, they would be attacking it. Well, mm -hmm. why, and so what? Well, that's kind of what I'm curious about. What do you think the reason that they? It seems like they chose this months ago to be one that they were going to be a, approving of, right? Um, like the way they Jackman. talked about popularity. I think, Mom. The popularity I, think yeah. I, I think that this is one of those weird movies where it crosses over with the um, with the grandfathered content that they love, yeah. which is the old stuff. So they're trying their best to make it about. I see. I saw posts like, "Oh, just two heterosexual guys hanging out." Right. I'm like, but, "But Deadpool's not heterosexual, so mm -hmm. I don't know what that means either." I mean, they're trying to well, erase that fact, right? Mm -hmm. Um, like, let's see. This is what I, I think I have. What you're talking about there? Um, uh, I mean, it was. I, I think it was probably a. It was probably a troll post, but it was just kind of dumb. I, mean, I want to turn just... the question that uh, asked by a tutorial slave back around on him. Um, you said, my, may I naively ask why Falcon had to become Cap? Cap. Well, I mean, why did Barry Allen have to become the Flash? Um, I'm sorry, Wally West have to come, become the Flash. And Barry Allen, too, actually. Why did anybody yeah. have to become another version of a character that already existed, a, a legacy character? It's, I have a video about it. You should go watch it if, you wanna, if you're actually curious. I think we all have at least naive. a couple legacy character videos up. It's yeah. come up quite a bit. <laughs> Zero gay man. Yeah. I don't know what the rest of it says. Um, I think this is the video that I that I have coming out later. Um, what? Where I? Yeah, I have a video about this coming out later. Cool. Um, it's yellow. Flash, I mean, right? they do like to find cringe taste because it's it's not like there's no gay characters in the movie. No. Well, okay. So I have an. I, I, I want to. Oh, sorry, Dave. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, I was just gonna say there's like one little piece of audio right here that's that's relevant. I was okay. Let that yeah. Quick. Go ahead. Um, do you dicks hang out here often. <laughs> Get it, dicks. Nice dick. <laughs> All right. Okay. So he has a nice dick. Yeah. So I my take on this, and if anybody in the chat is the people that normally disagree with us, um, I think I understand why he sort of gets a pass with the gay humor versus like everybody else. And it's because of the fact that he's make every joke is making fun of the gayness, of the queerness. None of them are embracing it. It's more I wouldn't necessarily say demeaning it, but it's like, it's not embracing it in a real meaningful way. Because I think a lot of people see folks like myself and other queer people as punchlines. Yeah. They see, they see our existence as just to be mocked and made fun of. Right. They don't see us as another individual because you hear the comments all the time that, Oh, everything revolves around, you know, you made gay your entire personality, blah, 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 whatever. So seeing like an episode of the last of us, where you see two gay men together in what is a meaningful relationship, something that matters to them. It's like, Oh, that's awful. Let me come up with reasons why it's awful. But when you mm -hmm. have a character like Deadpool, where everything queer is a punchline, it's a safe space for, yeah them to go into that's that's my take on it and you can you can tell me if you think this is like uh just cope or wrong or whatever but i can I tell you what i think it is that i appreciate that i enjoy the the, the humor of, from deadpool about um mm -hmm. it's that i feel like he's just so like free and okay with himself that that he doesn't give a f and like to me the comedy mm -hmm. is that he is that he's just kind of like uh, making other people go like, what the fuck? I don't know. Like, he, like he's um, yeah. not that he's making fun of anybody or not that he's using home uh, homophobia as like the punchline, but I might be wrong there. It just seems like, well, the other you know, thing is that a lot of the queer people that have criticized the movie have said that the issue is there's no balance. Like he's literally just rapid firing like yeah. queer centric jokes, but there's no moment where he, takes that part of himself seriously it's more like the stuff with the man-to-man -man stuff I'm, is a joke but the but the stuff with him and his uh partner his you know his girlfriend yeah. fiance whatever uh i don't know I, is I taken would, seriously 
I but would I say there there is that moment where Wolverine is is very critical of him and how he just can't take anything seriously and how he's kind of a dick. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I want to comment on this here. Um, uh, I think it's subjective what you think is being said. So this is kind of, I mean, I will agree. Humor, mm -hmm. art, all of it is subjective. So that's why I'm saying my opinion of it. This is what I think it is or why I think this is happening. I, I'm very careful now, especially re in recent times, probably within the last year and a half, on how I nail something down. I don't have any concrete evidence that that's what's going on. But I do feel like if you look at what gets attacked and what doesn't get attacked, typically gay jokes about gay people is okay. But anytime a gay person is to be taken seriously, it's not okay. That's yeah. that's kind of what I've noticed when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I just wanted to say one more time to Salty, because I said it in text, maybe you didn't see that in, in every single chat that was said in, you're welcome to come on the show later today or come on my show Friday if you want to. Hell, I'll even make a special, you know, stream for you tomorrow if you want to talk. Um, because you've, you've now been abusive and hostile towards me specifically. You're talking shit as if we're going to get in a fucking fight or something like a moron. If you want to have a conversation with me, we can do that. But otherwise, you need to fucking chill the fuck out and chat or I'm going to block you from every fucking channel. I don't care. Um, but you know, I, it's really tough because remember when you had morph right in X-Men 97, yeah. non-binary character who never really addressed being non-binary. Right. Um, but everybody was freaking out about it and they had already decided that they were going to go after X-Men 97. They were still trying to find a reason to basically hate the show. And when Morph went into the shower and joked at Wolverine about something sexual, that was the end of the world. There was video after video after video about that, about how they, you know, Disney went woke, Marvel went woke. Mm -hmm. And here you have a movie where you have the same character, Wolverine, same exact character with a perceived heterosexual character, which is what they keep trying to brand Deadpool as making pretty much rapid fire nonstop gay and queer jokes why is one of those woke but the other one i would love to understand why one of those is considered woke but the other one gets a pass especially yeah, on a movie where it happens throughout the entire film i i would love to know why that is i don't think anybody has the answer but i'm just sort of throwing yeah. it out no it's, it's something to think about yeah that's something that pops up too a lot all of a sudden, everybody's hardcore more fan when it's like, wait, he's non-binary? What? Right. <laughs> yeah, just like uh, how many uh, Azazel fans there were yeah. whenever it was revealed that he wasn't. <laughs> My favorite dad. character, Azazel? Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, it was kind of weird to me. I was thinking about that when I was uh, making my video earlier that like, you know, why was it that Morph and Disney were getting attacked for being woke over that one almost very forgettable joke? Could it be as simple as this? But no, that seems kind of re reductive, but it also might just be that, that they kind of see themselves <laughs> this way, right? Mm. I mean, oh, maybe. God. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I wish I had a better mm. answer. But I will say that uh, that I, I think, personally, maybe it could be even deeper than that. Maybe they know this movie is going to make a bunch of money because it's already over. Yes. It's already made over $500 yeah. million, um, And that they didn't want to have another Barbie situation where they attacked a movie well, that was going to make a lot of money so their their cope is basically giving everything a pass that's yeah. what i think well i mean because I they, they know that they know there's only going to be no one MC. What. because it, it's 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 something their <laughs> fan base probably won't be into um and even though yeah they did get a little bit of backlash it wasn't as extreme as you would expect but yeah um i think that's kind of an exception in general if it's popular they will well, say it's, okay oh, so it's not that's... woke <laughs> we we do need to talk about the other takes because there are different takes that they're doing with this right yeah. like uh I, I singled out a few of them here um pull this up because it, it's it is kind of the uh you know like the the odd one out like avatar 2 was right where it's like yeah i mean i'm surprised i was surprised with avatar 2 that they tried that but they got away with it apparently trying to pretend like it just isn't a disney thing because i think maybe a lot of casual audiences don't know that it is avatar um mm -hmm. it's not super obvious right but this should be 
more obvious, I think. Um, but I, I don't know. Um, so one of the takes that they're doing is um, somebody asked, who is they? Well, I mean, you know, if you're around here enough, you should know. The same folks, the grifters. Uh, so there's John De La Rose. Critical He's drinker, fucking... Friday night tights, a whole bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. I don't, ironically, I don't have any either. So there's other. no DEI in Deadpool, one of the most diverse movies <laughs> that Marvel's put out. I mean, right. the lead character's pansexual. There's a there's a disabled, uh, a blind black woman in the movie they make reference to a couple times. I mean, she's a major character, and they talk about her in the film being blind. It's a it's a point of conversation in the movie. Um. Because you know, those are, I was actually kind of surprised they didn't thing. make a joke about TJ Miller being cut out because I, I was expecting him to make a joke about that. I mean, guys, the reason that they that they constantly center the MCU and Star Wars in particular, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, one really simple one is Disney, because they mm -hmm. fucking for political reasons they hate dis Disney, right? They because uh, that's what their their political leaders have chosen to do. Um, Disney, you know, for all kinds of reasons. Um, Mainly just because they're willing to throw a, a, a fucking cynical bone to queer people now and then, uh, and then sometimes actually do decent little piece of representation, um, you know, for money. But like, still, that mm -hmm. goes against what they want, what they uh, think is good. Um, but also because those two franchises in particular are the biggest franchises in the world, and they, you know, alien. The Alien franchise, for example, isn't going to always have people just down to talk about the details of it, right? Like, it's got a lot of fans. A lot of people love the Alien movies and stuff, but it doesn't capture that same discourse that the other two do. Um, so you're, you're always going to have people that are going to uh, want to click on a Marvel thing or, or a Star Wars thing. Well, so because contrary to popular belief, they're not dead. That's the thing. This is the argument I keep having with people. They are the most popular things in the world. Star yeah. Wars, Disney, Marvel, Rings of Power, Lord of the Rings. These are the most popular things in the world. They're not dead. There's a lot of things that are not popular anymore, but these channels would not be talking about them. So that's why that narrative is stupid. It's a dumb narrative. So what about the narrative that uh, that it, it's destroying records and Disney won't learn anything from this? Because, I mean, that they've, been, they've planted that one for a while now. Whenever the trailer mm -hmm. dropped... There were several of them that were like, oh, this might be good, but it's going to be the only one. Don't don't think it's a sign that they're going to get better. It's just going to be one off, basically. So they've been ready for that one. Um, I don't understand. Disney. Oh, it's the uh, yellow flash. Yeah. Learn nothing. The bottom from one is really funny to me because it's uh, it's really fucking cynical. I think Disney, I mean, Deadpool and Wolverine breaking records, RDJ stealing thunder at Comic-Con. Wait, are you saying that Robert Downey Jr.'s reveal is stealing the thunder of the movie that's breaking fucking records like and, and why also also yeah are we trying to pit marvel against marvel is that yeah the, the is that mcu the, is yeah. stealing the thunder of the mcu that, so wait a minute that's how I, that thought, works. I thought marvel was dead so now we he's have yeah. double dip in the algorithm is what he's yeah. doing man we have two he's things that are massively popular competing in the news cycle and they're both from marvel double dip in the algo uh, that's Midnight's Edge. I right mean, later Midnight's on. Edge is insidious because they act like they yeah. know stuff and like I, I actually they find, will do research and stuff. Is it more like, than Tom? Yeah. Isn't Tom like the main mid person on Midnight's Edge? There's a Edge? couple of guys, but Tom's There's the a one couple that I'm of them. Of. But it's all Tom kind is of the boring. Same He's so boring to me. I just uh, I can't. Like, and then they have that Cameron Pashta guy on there all the time that they act like it's some kind of fucking insider and he just makes shit up. Um, it, it's crazy. <laughs> but all, all we know is that uh, Deadpool and Wolverine has destroyed uh, Disney. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's all we know. Um, I, I think it's funny to see the range of takes on this movie because I think what we're seeing with this film in particular is they want to be in the algorithm, but they don't really know what they want to talk about or what they want to say. Right. Like, so you end up with takes like Disney yeah. bosses are scared. They're scared of the movie that they made that's successful. What are you talking about, John yeah. DeLaRose? Like, <laughs> yeah. Deadpool insane. Wolverine Sorry. destroys modern Hollywood. Isn't the movie Hollywood? Like, right. how does yeah. it destroy Hollywood? It wasn't an indie film. It was made by Disney. 
it's like what was it it was a uh, puss in boots movie that they were saying like oh this destroys hollywood it's like where was this where do you think I, this was made? like i've always said people can watch what they want to watch but i'm always curious to why they choose to watch that kind of content like are you like what are you what value are you getting from those videos other than like a confirmation bias that you don't like something <laughs> Oh, you're, you've been such a good, good boy. You don't like the same things I don't like. Come on into the club. Come on to the Satan club. Satan cannot cast out Satan shuds. <laughs> yeah. It's so stupid. We talked about the insecurity thing earlier. When we were talking about these movies and, and characters. And um, I can't remember who said it in the chat, but somebody did bring it up about the, the word insecurity. And it got me thinking as we're talking here. I think the reason why some fans have issues with characters evolving or mantles being passed on is they no longer can gatekeep that character. You know what I mean? Like, if you think about it, the people that don't like Miles as Spider-Man probably aren't reading those comics. And no. they realize that there's going to yeah. be people that do like Peter Parker and also like Miles Morales, and they're going to read all of them. And all of a sudden, they're not going to be the true fans anymore. They're going to be the outliers. We've yeah. talked about before what they're trying to prevent is they're trying to prevent how, when you think of the, the Flash, who do you think of? Barry Either Allen. Barry Allen or Wally West, probably. Right, first. right. You're, yeah. Either but, way, but, they're yeah, not yeah. the first one. Right. You know? You're not thinking of Jay Garrick. Uh, and the same thing with uh, Green Lantern, and and you know, and and before too long, I'm sure Superman will be that to a degree. And and but I mean, that Miles is already there. I think for uh, like a whole generation, essentially. There um, are people that grew up with Miles as their only Spider-Man at this point. Yep. Like when they started reading comics. Miles was already an established character. So. So, like my son. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to cover Midnight's Edge on Deadpool and Wolverine. And if you guys are, are familiar with uh, uh, Midnight's Edge, they are... They are a YouTube channel that honestly they used to it used to feel like they had like across the Spider-Verse, huge, huge box office success, multiverse movie. Thank you, Hedgehog Nerd. Yes. Yeah. Like back in the early days when they first started, it felt like they had some like Hollywood insiders and they they like it felt like they had some facts behind them because it would be interesting and they'd share like backstories behind movies. And it was kind of cool. And I feel like whatever happened, their connection within Hollywood must have dried up. Um, and then, anyways, whatever happened, their, their connection must have dried up, and now they're just anti-woke shit. And now they're Deadpool and Wolverine. Disney celebrates Deadpool and Wolverine's success with a bait-and-switch. With a bait-and-switch. What the fuck are you even talking about, a bait? What? There's a picture of Lady Deadpool in there. Are you going to argue that Lady Deadpool is the main character of Deadpool and Wolverine? Is that? Yeah, and I, I don't even know what Kat, like Kathleen Kennedy is obviously there for clicks. South Park Kathleen Kennedy. Because Kathleen Kennedy is not in charge of Marvel. She's in charge of Star Wars. Yeah, she works for Disney too. But like Marvel's producer is Kevin Feige, not Kathleen Kennedy. But let's let's get her in there. So I haven't seen this yet. But I can tell you what's going to happen in this video, because I've done Midnight Size before, is they're going to, the beginning is going to seem fairly professional. They're going to throw some facts, some interesting figures at you. They're going to throw them at you. And then at some point in the video, it's going to take a turn, and it's going to go massive chud. And it's they're going to act like the previous stuff they said had anything to do with the stuff they're saying now, and it's not. Um, but let's see. Let's see. Let's give it a shot. Maybe it'll be decent. <laughs> With a tile like this, no way. Mm. While there have been some mixed reactions, Deadpool and Wolverine is overall a crowd pleaser and shaping up to be a worldwide smash hit. The first one Marvel Studios has had in years. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was a hit. That was last year. So, and there's only been, like, yeah, okay, the Marvels was between there, that was a flop. But saying they haven't had a hit in years is outright false but you see how he's 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 presenting an air of like confidence and knowledge but like immediately no that's wrong like just saying something that's flat out wrong now you would think that any sane film 
yeah, Wakanda Forever did well too. That that wasn't that long before Guardians Three. Studio, who is also a comic book publisher, like Disney is with Marvel, would capitalize on the success of a movie with such deep cuts by converting as much as possible of its audience into comic book readers. But alas, Disney and Marvel under Disney ownership are not sane companies. Because ensuring that anyone who attempts to check out new Deadpool comics will walk out right away. They just retooled the title. What? 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 Like, there's lots of Deadpool comics out. What? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> in adherence with the Kathleen Kennedy doctrine. Put a kick in it. Make her gay. Again, these guys are are agreeing with Eric Cartman, who is like the bigot of the South Park series. Like, if you're agreeing with Eric Cartman, you're wrong. My God. My Deadpool and Wolverine is in theaters, and the San Diego Comic-Con is on. So leave it to Marvel to find a way to use one to undermine the other by making a brand new comic book announcement and sharing it with the world on X. Deadpool is dead. Long live Deadpool. Get your first look at Wade's daughter Ellie taking up the mantle in two new covers and follow her new mission in Deadpool 7 by writers Cody Ziglod and Alexis Quasarano. With so, yeah, Cody Ziegler? Sounds awesome. Um, I, I, I've never seen him do, like, a take on a character like Deadpool, but could be fun. Um, Deadpool is dead. Who who knows? Um, I, I, all I know is it's not permanent, even if he is actually dead. How do you even kill Deadpool? Come on. Um, he'll be back, even if they do, like, a temporary thing. With art by Andrea De Vito, this... Is this going to be all based on this tweet? Is that it? Is that all they've got? Like, they're they're putting Deadpool and Wolverine in the name of this video, and it's just going to be based on this fucking tweet? Wow, that is a stretch, bro. That is a serious fucking stretch. November. So, in the comics, Deadpool is functionally immortal because Thanos won't let him die. A fun concept that predates Marvel Comics losing their minds to the woke mind virus. As the woke mind virus. Jesus Christ. These guys used to be a bit more subtle last time I covered them. Now he's just like, God, we're, we're not even two minutes in and he's going full anti-woke, man. Jesus Christ well as a possible prequel that you'd think the movie division Marvel Studios would be salivating at, especially after the success of this movie, and I'll have more to say about Marvel Studios in a bit here. But before we get to them, let's focus on the comic book division, Marvel Comics, that must have completely and utterly lost their minds, as they just killed off the immortal Deadpool and put a chick who is lame and gay in his book instead of him. Have they killed off Deadpool? Has anybody read uh, recent Deadpool? Did they actually kill him off? I mean, even if they did, I can guarantee you it's not permanent because it's a fucking comic book. But also, put a chick in it and made her lame and gay. Source? Source? Have we read this? Do, do, do we know that she is lame and gay? Well, number one, Deadpool's pretty gay to begin with. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's, let, Deadpool is not the straightest character in the fucking universe. So let's, so even if gay, who cares? Lame? Do, do we know she's lame? Do you have a source? Are you going to say anything? Because, like, if you don't have a source, if you haven't read it, if you don't know, then it just sounds like you're kind of being sexist because she's a woman. That's kind of what it sounds like. To set up why this is so insane, let's go back a decade in time to when the MCU was on top of the world, delivering banger after banger, winning over audiences of both genders across culture and language barriers, something the MCU was able to do because Ike Perlmutter's Marvel Creative Committee. Whoa. These guys, like, I remember back in the day, they used to, to point out how Ike Perlmutter was kind of a shithead. 
um, now they're pointing them out as a positive and then putting them in a strangely um, um, Trump-like hat that says, make Marvel great again. Um, wow. These guys are even more right-wing than last time I covered them. This is insane. Absolutely insane. T was still in place. It ensured that all of the MCU movies Kevin Feige produced had to be toyetic, so they would appeal to kids buying toys and adult collectors alike. Each project had to be good and stand on its own, while still being interconnected to the larger whole. This was the secret formula behind the MCU success, and something Kevin Feige would scrap in favor of the MCU as- Okay, so somehow saying that fucking Ike Perlmutter is the person who made the MCU awesome and, and Kevin Feige is fucking it up is complete fucking bullshit. Kevin Feige has been the guy in charge of the MCU for a while. Now, Ike Perlmutter used to stop him because um, he wanted to do a Black Widow movie earlier. That's the part of the, part of the problem. So, like, Kevin Feige wanted to do more women in movies and stuff like that early on. Ike Perlmutter stopped him. And then once Ike Perlmutter was gone, it allowed Kevin Feige to start doing the other movies he wanted to do and that's how come we have like a backlog of this stuff that's coming out all at once now i'm not i'm not denying that there isn't like more women and minorities starring in marvel projects than there used to be because there absolutely is it'd be insane to claim otherwise my argument is there's nothing wrong with that because it's been a fucking white boys club for way too fucking long yeah let's get some some more like faces in there let's get some more ideas in there as soon as he had the clout to do so, which we call As soon as he had the clout. No, I oh, Perlmutter no longer works for them. Um, well, is it? There's something either he no longer works for him or Kevin Feige did get the, the, was able to kind of push him out. It was one of the two. That being said, yeah, Kevin Feige has been the, the, the guy in charge of the MCU for the whole time. Um, fucking the Avengers and shit like that. That was, that was him covered extensively over the course of two videos detailing the rise and fall of the MCU, both of which are linked to in the description. You know, yeah, and they keep on freaking uh, um, going back um, and advertising their old videos anymore. It's ridiculous. Yeah, guys, real quick, don't watch these channels. If you want to make a request, and I will see if I can cover them, you can watch them through me. Don't watch them. Don't comment on them. Do not engage. Well, here, even if you end up watching them, don't comment. Don't engage. All that engagement helps them. Don't dislike. Don't like. Don't do anything. Leave these channels alone. If you don't like these channels, then leave them alone. If you want to engage with these chuds, engage with them in my comments. I have plenty of them in my comments. But point is, even when the MCU was in its prime, Marvel Comics were struggling because the massive audience for Marvel on the big screen just weren't converting into comic book readers. Why they weren't? They were, but I'm sure, like, I'm sure they would like more. But, like, yeah, it's, it's it, like, you're never going to get the same audience for a movie as you will for the comic books. It's not going to be the same. If you get a percentage of it, you're doing all right was a mystery to marvel comics though it no it's 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 not a medium that's as wide reaching it just isn't like i used people to pick up comic books at the comp at uh grocery stores and shit like that now i can only get comic books at a comic book store um you have to go to a specific location to get a comic book i guess you could argue the same with movies but like going to see a movie is more an event that everybody does going to a comic book store is a more niche event let's be serious it should have been blown well, Mr. Antigonic, none of the Avengers movies will have happened without Kevin Feige. None of them. Blatantly obvious to anyone with their mental faculties in somewhat working order. You see, this was the time when Marvel Comics were implementing the precursor to the MCU in the comics. The Okay, so yes, there was a time where Marvel Comics started pushing more women and, and minorities out there in the comic books. Um, you know, you might be like, oh, well, they've toned down since then. Yeah, because they got a lot of those characters out and it feels a bit more equal. The reason why. So the reason why it happened in the MCU was because Ike Perlmutter. Ken Feige was able to get the upper hand on Ike Perlmutter and start doing more of the movies he wanted to do, reach out to a bigger audience. The reason it happened in the comic books was the comic book code.
They reached a point where the comic book code didn't matter. So they just said, fuck it. You know, because comic book code pretty much just wanted, you know, fucking white men, frankly. Comic book code was pretty fucking bigoted, frankly, when you look into it. Old school conservative value shit. Like, they, they don't like the idea of women fighting against shit like that because it's against traditional values. Comic code sucked. So when the comic book code became irrelevant, yes, there became a wave of, of more women and minorities leading comic books. Just like what happened with uh, the MCU and Ike Perlmutter. The exact same situation. All new, all different initiative where Marvel Comics went full woke, replaced... Full woke? Full... Dude, you said woke mind virus earlier. You said full woke just now. What the fuck does woke mean? Give me a definition. Define woke. Is woke just your way of saying women and minorities? Because if 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 you're using woke in a negative, uh, if you're saying woke is a bad thing uh, and you're using it in place of women and minorities, are you saying women and minorities are a bad thing? Because, uh, lame? Placing <laughs> the bulk of their heroes with female and or more diverse counterparts. Meaning, if any movie-going audiences just coming out of, say, Avengers Age of Ultron decided to check out the comics, as they couldn't wait for the next movie featuring their favorite heroes, they'd give up right away because their favorite characters weren't in them. If what? I mean, it depends on the book they pick up. Um, yeah, there was kind of a period where, like, kind of the new characters were kind of taking over, but now they coexist, so... And uh, I don't know, like, it kind of varies. Like, you know, we had Jane Foster Thor for a while, but, like, there was still the unworthy Thor going on. Lots of times these characters had secondary books. Some of them did die and then come back, but, like, some of them had secondary books. Like, they weren't all gone. Like, right now, Miles Morales is a big-selling book. Uh, Miles Morales' Spider-Man. Guess what else is big? Peter Parker's Spider-Man. They're coexisting. Um, Sam Wilson, Captain America, is leader of the Avengers. Steve Rogers, Captain America, is, is still a significant character who, who is out there fighting the good fight. Um, yes, there's diverse versions of the characters, but there's also the classic version of the character. Pick up whatever you want to read, because it depends on the writer which one's good. Um, I, I, I enjoy both Spider-Men quite a bit. I, I thought uh, Jane Foster's run as Thor was under Jason Aaron, was fan-fucking-tastic. Read what you want. If you don't like it, put it down, pick up a different book. It's that simple. If they picked up a Thor comic, they wouldn't find the Thor they knew from the big screen. No, they'd find Lady Thor. Well, it depends. Pick up the Mighty Thor at that time. Yeah, maybe you get Jane Foster. Pick up the Unworthy Thor, and guess what? You're getting the classic Thor from the movies you wanted. It's right there. <laughs> if they picked up a Hulk comic, they wouldn't. Oh, um, Paul, the reason you never got into comic books was because you didn't know where to start out. It's intimidating. It is intimidating going to a comic book store and not knowing where to go. Um, there's lots of old number one. There's lots of number ones. They reboot frequently just to, to give people good starting points. And, you know, that's usually reliable. Um, but if you're really not sure, I always say... Um, it sounds weird because it's essentially judging a book by its cover. If you see a cover you like, pick it up. Most comic books will be good enough to let give you like a, a foothold and let you get in. Um, it's not a guarantee, but it's reasonable. Um, and if you're really not sure, then just you know look for number one. There's plenty of number ones. Change Mutant Ninja Turtles number one just came out. Um, we're getting that that new Blood Hunt series just coming out. Um, X-Men. There's a huge X-Men reboot coming on. All number ones. We got a number one X-Men just came out. Uh, lots of spinoff series. Phoenix number one just came out. NYX number one just came out. We got a Wolverine number one coming out in, in September. Lots of number ones. And the reason they're doing that is to give people places where they can easily step in. Uh, if you're looking not so much at the mainstream stuff, um, um, Doctor Who. D Doctor Who, the 15th Doctor, just released the first issue of his comic book. Solid one. Solid one. Yeah, there's 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 plenty. Like, frankly, if you want to get into comic books, dive in. Don't let them scare you. Go to a comic book shop, grab a comp, grab like maybe like two or three comic books that look cool to you. 
and see if you like them. It's that simple. I can't. They're not all winners, but some of them are. And, and actually, yeah, if you want to like um, get a hold of me, like give you recommendations, like off the top of my head, I'll t- tell you the best comic book series right now, in my opinion. Right now, Tom King's run on Wonder Woman, fucking fantastic. Uh, Jonathan Hickman's run on Ultimate Spider Man, fucking great. Um, Peach Momoka's run on Ultimate X Men, very fucking interesting. Um, Jason Aaron just starred Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so he's not very far into that. It started well. Um, those those are just a couple areas where I would say check them out. Uh, the big DC event, Ultra, Absolute Power, pretty much just started. So if you want to check out a big event, you can pre you should be able to find a number one of that one and and be able to dive in there. There's lots of areas where you can dive in. Don't don't let them intimidate you. Just go in there, grab two or three books. Odds are at least one of them will be a winner that you'll enjoy. Yeah, so IDW, Sonic the Hedgehog, that's a lot of the books my son gets when he goes to a comic shop with us. ...and find the trials and tribulations of Bruce Banner. No, they'd find some Asian kid who was Hulk at the time. Yeah, he's not Hulk any... Well, I don't know if he's Hulk anymore, but Bruce Banner is the main Hulk now. Um, Yeah, that was one where they... I'm pretty sure they did kill off Bruce Banner, so that was one they did kill him off. Um, That being said, like... Like I said, like, yeah, there's lots of uh, variants of the characters during this time because the comics code. But uh, most of the main characters are still around. Bruce Banner is definitely an exception. Um, but, uh, yeah, most of them are still around. So you can still get most of the classic characters still around even at this time. If they picked up a Captain America comic, they wouldn't find Steve Rogers, but Black Falcon Captain America. I think it's interesting. You had to call him Black Falcon. Falcon Captain America. You couldn't just call him Falcon Captain America. Black Falcon Captain America. Black. Is that what makes him woke? He's black? So is being black a bad thing? If woke's a bad thing and being and and feeling and, and being black is woke, does that mean being black's a bad thing? I don't think so. But apparently you're saying you're definitely implying it is. Um Weird take, man. Weird take. And fun fact, like, I know lots of people want Bucky to be the the MCU Captain America. I kind of always liked Falcon for it. I always liked uh, 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 Sam Wilson for it, just because I thought Sam Wilson had the better attitude for it. I'm not saying Bucky can't be a good Captain America, because I like Bucky's character as well, but he definitely has some shit to work through. He has some shit to work through. Falcon's already at the point where he'd be in a good spot to be Captain America. And I thought they did a great job adapting his, his suit. And I like... I appreciate the fact that, like, they don't just give him super soldier serum and just make him normal Captain America. No, he's like an amalgamation of Falcon and Captain America when he's Captain America. I like that. It's something different. It's cool. Before long, if they picked up an Iron Man comic, they wouldn't find Tony Stark, but a black chick in Iron Heart. An Iron Man or an Iron Heart comic book? Iron Man comic book would probably be Tony Stark. Iron Heart would not be Tony Stark. Um, yes, she is a legacy character. She is not Iron Man, though. <laughs> this is how, at the same time as Marvel ruled the world on the big screen, Marvel Comics were verging on bankruptcy as their shitty line of comics drew away every last one of the numerous moviegoers that wanted to check them. Did they? You gonna have a, like... You gonna have any figures on that? You just, you know, doing this based on feels? Doing this based on the feels? Okay. He's got the feels, guys. Even though I can't even tell if he even reads comic books, I'm pretty sure he doesn't, based on the shit he's saying. Um. So, yeah. Those comics out. The item. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice that. Was, was Spider-Gwen one of those characters? Yeah, so Spider-Gwen, Scarlet... Scarlet Witch has been around for... Okay, so, like... Scarlet Witch has been around for fucking ever. What are you talking about? She's always been Wanda. Come on. Uh, Spider-Gwen's a newer character. She's popular. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel movie made over a billion dollars. And, um... Yeah, you know, like, you could argue gender swap character. Uh, Carol Danvers' Captain Marvel is the most successful that character has ever been. 
the only possible exception would be the Shazam version because it's not Marvel. Marvel was a comic book that was never, never successful. His most successful run was when it when it bombed. Um, Jason Aaron's Mighty Thor, Jane Foster Thor, is awesome. I recommend checking it out. There's a graphic novel release of it. It's awesome. It's very cool. Um, um, look, these images look weird. They look like almost like man like and they're these are not what the characters quite look like it's a really bad image he picked anyways and then here we got x23 uh uh laura kenny i think that's right x23 is awesome x23 is a great character come on come on man get better midnight Eds, get better what is this shit every last one of the numerous moviegoers that wanted to check those comics out. I love that. Every last one of the moviegoers were disappointed with those comic books. Really? Every last one? Did you talk to every last one? What, what's your citation? Because it feels like you're just saying, pulling shit out of your ass. What the hell? The irony here, of course, is that the official reason why Marvel Comics um, well, okay, real quick. So we got Sam Wilson, Captain America. We got Jane Foster's Thor. We got Miles Morales' as Spider-Man. Um, we got uh, Kamala Khan's Miss Marvel. And with them is uh, definitely 100% appears to be Tony Stark's Iron Man, Vision, and Nova. Nova's not a particularly popular character. Um, so this is definitely a mixture of the old and the new. So this is maybe not the best picture to, to use. But hey, you know, why not? Comics did this insanity in the first place was to expand the again. <laughs> what the fuck is with this picture? OK, I don't recognize the first one. It looks like maybe a Spider Woman version. And then what? Another Spider Woman version. Um, and then we got X-23, an awesome character. We have Storm. Fucking Storm has been around forever. A oh, Silk. Thank you, Silk. Yeah, Silk's pretty cool. Fucking Storm is on there. God damn, Storm. Storm is like one of the most... Storm is arguably the coolest Marvel woman ever. The fuck? Come on. And then Captain Marvel, again, we already brought Captain Marvel. She's like, her movie made a billion dollars. She is the best-selling version of that ver of that character ever. Um, she's not going anywhere. Um, you gotta have an argument... Like, you've already shit on Storm, which is, like, one of the most classic characters. Come on, man. And you're shitting on Scarlet Witch. Like, the fuck? <laughs> ...readership into new groups that would suddenly feel safe and represented by seeing themselves on the page. I don't know if it feels safe, but, like, yes, people do like to see uh, people who look like them on, on in media. It's just, it's, it's a... Um, it's kind of a primitive re uh, reaction, but yes. But yes. Um, yeah, I know. Silk is very cool. Um, but yeah, uh, hu humans are like that, though. We like to see people who look like this uh, in media. It's just, it's a primitive thing. I wish we didn't, weren't like that. But um, you want to know how we can prove without a doubt and how Midnight's Edge is actually proving that we like to see ourselves in media. Um, he's complaining about not white men being present. Like, if it didn't matter, then why does why are you complaining about it? What's the issue? Huh. Obviously, it did not work, as no new readership came in. On the contrary. Do you have numbers to support that? Let's see some numbers, dude. And I know people are going to watch this and be like, well, what, what, where are my numbers? He's not providing any numbers. Why do I have to provide numbers? He's just saying that it's a bomb. I'm going to say prove it. And if he doesn't prove it, then why do I have to provide counter evidence? It, it, there's nothing to counter. <laughs> it was a complete disaster, as their built-in readers abandoned them in droves, contributing to many a comic book read. Abandoned them in droves. Again, citation needed. Retailer going out of business in the process. 
Marvel Comics eventually had to revert to the traditional heroes, just to stay afloat. But by Well, most of the traditional heroes never went away. They were always there. Like, Spider-Man's in the forefront. Peter Parker's Spider-Man never went anywhere. I don't... Like, the only time Peter Parker's Spider-Man was kind of going somewhere was the Clone Saga back in the 90s. And he was being replaced with Ben Riley, who's just a fucking clone of Peter Parker. That's the closest he went to anywhere. Um, I guess you could argue Ultimate Spider-Man died, but that's Ultimate Spider-Man. Mainline 616 Spider-Man, comic book Spider-Man has always been there. Um... Black Panther, like looking at these characters, Black Panther has been replaced. Wolverine, I'm pretty sure, has always been there. Yes, X-23 coexists with him. She-Hulk's been around forever. Ghost Rider's been around forever. Punisher's been around forever. Luke Cage has been around forever. Steve Rogers, Captain America, was gone for a bit, but then he came back. Gambit's been around. What is up with these pictures, man? You're, you're trying to make a point, then you pull up a picture that makes... that No. <laughs> It's, this does not back up your point at all. <laughs> By the time they did, Kevin Feige had wrestled control over the MCU away from Ike Perlmutter and caused it to go full. Okay, so Ike Perlmutter had influence over the MCU. He did not have control. It was mostly Kevin Feige the whole time. Ike Perlmutter did have some influence, but wasn't like Kevin Feige's been the driving force behind the MCI, MCU the whole time. Like arguing that Ike Perlmutter ran it earlier is such a, a, a misrepresentation of how it worked. It's ridiculous. Oh yeah, maybe they're talking about Superior Spider-Man? I didn't think about that. Like, but that was, I mean, he was still a white dude. It was just a, a Dr. Octopus in Peter Parker's body. So yeah, fucking weird. As well, at which point moviegoers I like that, just woke. Um, so Miss Marvel, Thor Love and Thunder, and Eternals are woke. What the fuck does that mean? Define this. You keep on saying woke, and like all these guys, let's say woke, but not, not to fucking define it. Like, if, you're, if your whole fucking conversation piece is that comic books and movies are woke, you need to clearly define what the fuck woke means and why it's a bad thing. Of course, we're no longer interested in checking out the comics. Why would they be when they were rapidly losing interest in even the movies? Okay, so um, Chris Evans' Captain America died. Captain Carter is not a replacement, but like we see her in Ultimate Universe, it's not a replacement at all. Um, um, Jane Foster Thor. Okay, if you haven't seen Thor Love and Thunder yet, Jane Foster Thor is dead. Chris Hemsworth is the one that's still around. Just saying, that that example is ridiculous. Um, Hawkeye, right now, Hawkeye. It's kind of like comic books right now. Clint Barton and Kate Bishop are both still around. Clint Barton is semi-retired with his family, but they are both very much still around, could both very much appear in any project they want. Jeremy Renner, I know, had that accident, but like, uh, as far as I uh, last I heard, he is recovering nicely. He's doing all right. Um, Loki, Sylvie was an alternate universe variant of Loki, but Loki was still very much the lead character of that, and I don't see Sylvie really appearing anymore in the MCU now that Loki's wrapped up. Like, I don't really know what her place would be. She Hulk, again, both Bruce Banner and Jen Walters coexist right now in the MCU. There's no sign of any one of them actually giving up. Unlike uh, uh, Clint Barton, Bruce Banner is not even established to be semi-retired. He's just established to be around. So what is this example? What is this image supposed to say? Like just male and female? Okay, cool. Why are you presenting us like a bad thing? It's just, okay. Yes, there are women versions of the characters. Who cares? <laughs> as it turned out, what failed in the comics failed in the movies as well. Wait, 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 wait. You you didn't bring up any numbers about the terrible failure of the comic books. Are you going to bring up any numbers about the terrible failure of the movies? Because the beginning of this video was you talked about how Deadpool and Wolverine... By the way, this is a Deadpool and Wolverine fucking video. You want to talk about bait and switch? This is a fucking bait and switch. 
Are you fucking serious right now? This is a Deadpool and Wolverine video, and we're talking about fucking comic books and and uh, uh, fucking women and minority characters. Like, this is the biggest bait and switch I've ever seen in my fucking life, Midnight's Edge. And you're guilty of it. You would think that someone in Marvel Comics would have learned some lessons from this whole disaster, but nope. The woke mind virus is nothing if not resilient. So here they are, repeating what has never worked before, by effectively gender-bending Deadpool, thereby squandering the best opportunity to convert moviegoers into comic book readers that they are likely to ever have. And Is that... You have any evidence of this? Like, come on, man. Depending on how things play out, this may even be their last chance to convert moviegoers into comic book readers. Really? This might be their last chance. Well, I guess it might be. It might also be, like, they might also get, like, a thousand more chances. Like, what? what is, like, I love how you just say shit without any evidence. It's wild. It's wild. Because leaving Marvel Comics aside and going back to the movies, you'd also hope that the success of Deadpool and Wolverine would inspire some level of soul-searching in Kevin Feige and his merry band of woke- So they, they made a Deadpool 3 and it was a huge success and it requires soul-searching on Kevin Feige's part. Why? They always planned to do a Deadpool 3. That was fairly early on once the Fox acquisition came through. Uh, Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool was one of the few characters they wanted to bring over and definitely do a, a, a Marvel movie with. Why would that require soul-searching? That was, like, early on in their plans. The fuck? Like, I love, I love these channels just saying shit and not having to provide any fucking evidence. It's wild. Yes, man. Surrounding him in Marvel Studios. And hope springs eternal, I guess. But my fear is that the woke mind virus is too resilient even in Marvel Studios. Wow. He uses woke a lot and has yet to define it or define what's wrong with it. Just fucking throwing it out there. Studios. You see, Kevin Feige never wanted to do another Deadpool. And he certainly... Whoa! He never wanted to do another Deadpool? Based on what? Based on what fucking evidence do you have that you never want to do another Deadpool? What, what, what the fuck? I love he's just saying shit. I don't have to provide any evidence. I'll just say stuff in authoritative voice. What the fuck? He never wanted to bring back Hugh Jackman. Hell, he even tried talking Jackman out of it. Did he? What source do you have for that? By all accounts, the movie only happened because Ryan Reynolds petitioned Bob Chapek directly, and Chapek gave it the green light. Okay, okay, so real quick, if you're talking about um, the, early, the early days when Bob Iger was in charge before Bob Chapek, that was before they had Fox. Yeah, he's not going to bring Hugh Jackman in to play Wolverine because they don't have the rights to that character and they'd have to play a substantial sum to Fox to get that character. Now, then Chapek is in charge, and then the Fox acquisition happens, and then Niall Igor is in charge, and yeah, it, the movie happens. Like, this is so, like, ignoring actual events that happened. Yes, Bob Igor did not want to bring Hugh Jackman's Wolverine into the MCU before when it would cost a huge amount of money. No fucking shit. What evidence do you have that, like, he was against him coming in for Deadpool and Wolverine? What evidence do you have for that? You're just saying shit, man with the R rating, swearing, gore, and everything. But JPEG is gone now. It's Bob Iger and Kevin Feige, the architects behind the MCU's destruction that will do- Um, number one, you have yet provide evidence. Like, one flop does not mean the MCU is destroyed. Come on. Uh, these guys are also the architects of its massive success. So you have yet to provide evidence that it's destroyed because it's funny how Deadpool and Wolverine's a smash hit if it's destroyed. But also it's huge success, which is pretty, like it's the biggest fran movie franchise in existence. It's huge. Determine what lessons to take away from this unexpected success. Dude, like he's already moved away from comic books. I don't think he's even going to bring up the, the, the manga argument, which is weak sauce to begin with. 
Um, because like, yeah, there's the, the manga argument, which was actually made by Chuck Dixon and yeah, manga outsells comic books. It also ignores the fact that yes, manga sales are up and comic book sales are up, but he's not even going to bring that up. He's just going to say comic book sales suck. And that's it. Like, he's not going to bring up any evidence. He's not going to bring up any sources. Just so full of shit. Will they? Do and the chuds who watch this and are like, hey, you aren't bringing up sources either. I don't have to. I don't have to bring up sources to debunk him because he doesn't have any sources. You want a source? Fucking Google. Draw the correct conclusion or continue the failed DEI driven MCU experiment. Ah. That... Oh. So, again, you're implying that women and minorities make it woke. So, woke means women and minorities, and that means women and minorities are bad, according to your implication in this video. Again, that seems pretty fucking big to take. Just saying. That they brought about in the first place. I would love to be wrong here, but until otherwise is proven. Well, I mean, you're wrong here because you've been wrong on pretty much everything in this video. So yeah, you're wrong here. So yeah, good work. I fear Deadpool and Wolverine will be just like season three of Star Trek Picard. That is a momentary respite from a string of garbage. As if a string of garbage. Okay, so Picard season one and Picard season two sucks. Let's be honest. Picard season two sucks. Picard season one's pretty rough. Season three is the best one. Um, okay, cool. Uh, what about the other Star Trek seasons? So like Discovery season one was rough, but like since then Discovery has been decent. Um, Strange New Worlds is fantastic. Lower Decks is fantastic. I haven't seen Prodigy yet. I've only heard good things. So you're comparing the entire MCU to what? Three seasons of Star Trek Picard exclusively? That seems like a stretch. Okay, like, because franchise-wide, it doesn't hold up remotely. Well, I guess it does hold up remotely. Yeah, Um. so Star Trek has had some dud seasons, and it's had a lots of good seasons. Um. The MCU has had some good and dud movies and seasons. So I guess that does hold up, but, like, not with the argument you're making. Yeah, woke does mean diversity of media. And again, diversity of media is, in my opinion, a good thing. Let's get more voices in there, for fuck's sake. Yes, I think white guys have plenty of voices. They still have plenty of voices in media. Um, yeah, let's 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 mix it up a bit, for love of God. Events conspired to let an actual creative team take charge of this one project. Only for the powers that be behind all that other garbage, ignore any lessons, and carry on as before. Okay, dude, like, what, are you saying Strange New World sucks? Like, what, are you saying everything after Star Trek Picard Season 3 sucks? Because I'm having trouble thinking of a bad Star Trek season that takes place after Picard Season 3. Um... I don't think there's been a huge amount of seasons since then, but like, what, there's been like a lower deck season and a Strange New World season, and they're both pretty fucking good? So what the fuck is your argument? What do you think? Let me know. I think you're insane. In the comments. Oh my god, he has gotten way worse. Like, he used to kind of have this air of, like, seriousness behind him, like, you know, he knows what he's talking about, but... He doesn't even have that anymore. This is just insane garbage. Like, Midnight's Edge. Holy shit. Like, I thought you'd gotten bad before, but you've gotten so much worse. This is ridiculous. This is a joke of a video. A joke of a video. And I can't even begin to explain to you, like, yeah, um, this is also um, a bait and switch of a video, which is ridiculous. God. God. I used to like this channel. I used to like them. They're garbage. They're fucking garbage. And I think that Midnight's Edge video really exemplifies the major issues you deal with toxic fandom, you know, the anti-fandom communities, um, all these guys. Because that was a Deadpool and Wolverine video. Yet it was talked about how Deadpool's daughter was taking over in the comic books, which had nothing to do with the movie. It, and it was literally a movie thumbnail. Uh, it was a video 
not only was they accusing Marvel of doing a bait and switch, that whole video was bait and switch. Like, they're literally guilty of exactly what they're claiming Marvel's doing. But not only that, um, it is also designed to farm outrage. Hey, Deadpool and Wolverine's a popular movie. It's probably going to be pretty tough to, to really go all out against it. But you know what? Negative content is going to get more clicks than positive content. So instead, let's just go ahead and, and whine about comic book news, but frame it as a video for the movie. It is complete garbage, and it shows so much that is absolutely wrong. Like, just looking for outrage. Hey, we can't complain about this movie. The fans might turn on us if we complain about this movie. But let's go ahead and just complain about some comic book shit. I, like, I haven't been following Deadpool comic books. I don't know if they're going to kill off Wade Wilson and replace him with his daughter for a little bit. But fun fact, if you want to go to any comic book store and find a Wade Wilson Deadpool comic book, you will have, undoubtedly, hundreds of books to choose from. Because, fun fact, going to a comic book shop, you can get the new comic books, yes, but you also have access to so many back issues. It's ridiculous. So if you want to check out the new Deadpool run with his daughter, check it out. And, I mean, that's something Marvel will do. They will experiment with a new variation on the character when that character is going to get a spike in success from something else just to see if that they can give a new character a little edge coming up in the future. That's just standard business practice. But if you're not interested in that, just pick up some Wade Wilson Deadpool comic books. They're right there. It's such fake outrage, and it's infuriating. And it's why these channels are such a goddamn problem. That's one of the frustrating things about toxic fandom. They pretend like they're the real fans. But the fact is, all they're looking for are, are things to get mad about, things to get upset about. That's not what fans do. Fans get disappointed when something is bad. They don't expect it to be bad. They don't go into it expecting it to be bad. Yet these guys train their fans to go ahead and act that way. And that's not how fans act. It's the antithesis of how fans act. That's why I think the term uh, uh, coined by Dane, actual fandom, anti-fan, really seems to sum up what these guys do and how they, they kind of teach their fans to view media. It's frustrating, but it's an issue. Um, and, and God forbid you actually say, hey, I like something that they dislike, because they will have your head for that. And that's an art issue that I'm sure we'll cover some point in the future in this series. So before I, I leave you, please like, subscribe, comment on this video. It all helps out so much. And here's a list of other channels you should absolutely check out. Organized Chaos Podcast, Actual Fandom, Turf Nation, Eric's Reloaded, Eric Debunks, Pop Counterculture, Forced Adversity Podcast, Mr. Tardis, Pillar of Garbage, Bob of the Old Ways, Nothing But Media, Blurred Without Fear, Blurry Films, Chariot, Edgier Than Thou, My Two Cents of Nonsense, Bobby Quarters, and many, many more. You know, the very powerful and the very stupid have one thing in common. They don't alter their views to fit the facts. They alter the facts to fit the views. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth. That brings us to the last book of this week, and it was also a new release. Ooh, that. Uh... So uh, we'll get into what cover I got here. So, yeah, I brought it up, and this was the winner. Whoa! You see, now, when I read these books, like House of Brainiac was the big winner here, and then this was a bit more even. But now Deadpool, Wolverine, World War Three uh, is definitely the big winner of this bunch. It swapped since then, but like it was winning anyway, so I already read it. Um, anyway, so like I did not get a high quality cover. So I didn't really like any of the covers here, and I went for the one that was colorful, even though I didn't really like the art style. And that should have been a huge fucking indicator, because 
I got the fucking Rob Liefeld one. And after I realized that, I was like, oh. Because I felt like while the other ones didn't stand out to me, they were, there was creative stuff they did with the other ones. And this one was kind of just more standard. I don't know. Alright, so I got the Rob Liefeld cover. <sighs> I guess I guess they let him do a cover because he technically created fucking Deadpool, but like Deadpool as we know him was created by by Fabian uh, Nieces. How do you pronounce it? Much better writer. Anyways, um, so uh, we start out with this big old page. Now, if you are wondering, this is not how the page looks in the book. Let me go ahead and show you how it looks in the book. Oh, my God damn. I'm going through all these issues. I hope you guys want some background bag noise of me messing with bags. So, it looks like this in the book. So, this is... Oh, wait. So, this is the book, like, when you open it. So, you turn it this way to read it. Anyways, it's it's Wolverine walking around with an axe, and it's like, it's it is human nature to transform our surroundings through ingenuity and will. It's human nature to propagate the species and and celebrate our legacy. It is human nature to deploy all of our considerable tools against the constant pull of entropy. Else, the magnitude of our collective truth becomes too much to bear. And then he 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 gets like he gets like this demon fucking weapon X going after him, which is kind of cool. And again, so, um, real quick, so this looks like it's a single page, but you might notice the words are kind of small because this is it's it's a gatefold, but you gotta turn it uh, vertical to get uh, proper, so or horizontal. How would that be? You gotta turn it to the side to to read it properly. Um, so he he gets faced off with a, a demon from his past, weapon axe and. Big old monster version, and he, he's, they start cutting at each other. So everything's going fine. And then we cut to Deadpool and Wolverine, World War III. Um, Joe Kelly's the writer. Adam Kubert's the, the artist. Um, um, and then with his mutant healing factor and enhanced senses, the man known as Logan has been weaponized throughout his long life as both a willing and, and conscripted member of various clandestine, clandestine organizations, including Weapon X, which exploit his healing power to bend his skeleton and claws with unbreakable uh, metal adamantium. Logan's uh, li lived and lost and honed his fighting skills as sharp as adamantium claws uh, he now wields. He is the best there is at what he does, and, but what he does is not very nice. He is Wolverine. And then uh, uh, the mercenary Wade Wilson was dying of cancer when joining up with the Weapon X program gave him a second chance at life. Wade underwent an experimental procedure that gave him a healing factor based on Wolverine's uh, uh, allowing him to continue to do his good and bad works. The scars remain, as does the indomitable sense of humor. He's the regenerating degenerate, the merc with a mouth Deadpool. So anyways, we got we got Wolverine uh, hidden the city 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 uh, rooftops. Um, doing investigations. And then he encounters this. And this dude's yelling, I want my summer! Is that... I didn't miss a page, did I? Okay, we are missing a page. God damn it. I missed it. Okay, so... There's a there's a page missing. Technical issues. I was having technical issues getting this set up. So I'm, I'm kind of surprised it went so seamless. So, you know, uh, Wolverine's... You know, he's just on the rooftops uh, looking around. And there's this giant explosion near him and then these guys come busting out and then you know we got uh, I want my summer I will also yell to obtain what I do not currently have like shoes that match my pouches but if we if we all got that got what we wanted by screaming and or murdering folks wait are you American that would explain so much then it's like fuck Deadpool fuck you know and then you know, we got this blue electricity guy fighting uh, uh, Deadpool, and then Wolverine jumps in. Um, you know, so so we got uh, madness going back and forth between these dudes. So they're going after this guy. Wolverine's charging, and then Deadpool just throws a whole bunch of stuff around Wolverine because he's he's reckless. And then the dude's able to knock out Wolverine fairly easily. 
And Wolverine just gets back up and, and dives right in. And Wolverine's like, uh... Things like, ah, healing factor, I'll cover it. Think the, the tentacles absorb energy... I think the tentacles absorb energy from, uh, uh, COVID... Uh, covalent atomic bombs and truth and turn it into physical strength or he's a squid who got bit by a radioactive serial killer pry the latter so this is a team up now and he's like piss off fact we got we got wolverine and deadpool uh fighting the bleak green energy dude um complete chaos you know he, he, he gets, you know, it looks like he's able to zap through Deadpool, who's healing up, and then he get, gets Wolverine captured. And then Deadpool's just blasting away at him, and he's jumped on Wolverine's shoulders because he's a goofball. And the dude's just uh, got the energy and shit. You know, and he, he he's, it, it, things are getting insane. Things are getting insane. Then Wolverine and Deadpool kind of realize they got to, they gotta do something, so they just slash through him, and he just falls apart, and it's over. It's like, diabolical double dissection, dude. Fuck you, Wade. And then it's later, drinks at my place. I scored a, a, a Sky b, b above the Slim Norton. Smells of uh, diabetes and desperation. Go count your money. Uh, uh, you sound pleased. We, we capped a serial killer piece of shit. We weren't gonna save a guy like that. Sometimes broken is just broken. Same could be said about us. Me, not you, not anymore. Mutant outcasts who manipulated uh, monster to beloved X-Men. Third time's a charm, I guess. The hell you on about? Nothing, I just uh, uh, quipping about the night fantastic. Smell you later, Wolvie. So Wolverine's out drinking. Um, you know, just, just chilling. And then uh, uh, washing out the day. Washing out the day? Trying. Never works. Eh, definition of insanity. Uh, and then it's like, there's a Slim Nortons around here. You're fucking with me, right? Pick a direction and start walking. You'll hit one every ten feet or so. It's like, I'm supposed to be on a plane. The monster's dead, so the monster killer can piss off, but... Wasted gifts. Killer was new to the power game. Maybe he was a uh, batshit before. Maybe power ate his brains. Regardless, um, um, someone's making monsters, and I—I I think I know the idiot who burner phone got unburnt. A lucky break. So he, he got a burner phone, and he's like, uh, "My tech head pal Forge traces the burners. Last called to Siberia, big place to find one." I'll. Uh, a little mark, but I'll I get another lucky break. Signs of private flight manifest from Vancouver. Uh, that's a scramble of Wade Wilson. Oh, okay, so Sonia W. Lou. That's a scramble of Wade Wilson. In case you're wondering, uh, so he's tracking down Deadpool. See what's up. Um, Miss Lou booked a, a room in a fancy pants hotel on Lake uh, Baki. Balakai with another guest, uh, uh, Ernie Wolf, the world's crappiest trail of red crumbs. Um, so, so he's tracking down the Deadpool. And then, then he ends up here and big old army of dudes come crashing through and they're yelling, no witnesses. And they're, they're charging at him. They're shooting at him. But of course it's Wolvie, so he can take a beating. You know, it's pain is a powerful motivator sometimes. It's the only one that will work on a person. I can't afford the luxury of giving over to pain. That's how my monster comes out. In spite of appearances, I don't want to be that monster never again. It fucking hurts, but I swim through it as a man. So he cuts through everybody, and he's all bleeding and messed up. And it's like, have you ever been to the... Uh, Boy Shoy, uh, Mr. Logan? Uh, Club-footed miscreant compared to you? Your performance exceeds expectation. Performance? What else does one call art in motion? Uh, so, yeah. That, and then, oh, the films are one thing. But to see your work in person, why? What game is Deadpool playing? The answers are here, sir. And the thwack. And then he's, he's driving off. He's trying to figure out what the heck's up with Deadpool. Um, you know, 
money only smells like blood, whether it jiggles or fold. What sort of elite jack-offs you get into bed with this time, Wilson? And then it's like, uh, uh, welcome, Mr. Logan. Um, it's like, you might want to take that ride back to civilization. Uh, you're about to be unemployed. Thank you, sir. So, you know, they, they got, they're all set up for him. They got the, 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 the red carpet for him and everyone. It's like, he finally arrives. One, the only Wolverine. And they're all applauding him. Welcome, sir. It's like, where's Deadpool? Uh, the voice, I have chills. Fuck off. Did you expect the musk? It's like, oh my god, he touched me so strong. Shorter than I thought. Camera heads, 10 pounds and 3 inches, apparently. And it's like, god damn it, so many people are going to get their ass kicked. And holy shit. And then Deadpool comes walking out in this fancy suit. And it's like, Wade? Um, uh, what did you do? He chose courage. The courage to be better. He allowed me to help him. Anyone beyond the, the constraints of his considerable but limiting form. Deadpool, you hear me? And yep, yeah, no, Deadpool's attacking. Um, good fun. He his chosen name is Wade Wilson the Third. And that now now we we got the, the Wolverine versus Deadpool carved into each other. Good fun. Good good insanity. Good insanity. And the the fight continues. This is the power of change to be continued. And yeah, and we get a little, you know, number two kind of standard artwork. What would you expect for number two? So my thoughts on this book is that this book is fine. I don't have any strong feelings towards it. It's got entertaining parts. It's not bad per se. But um, I definitely, I, I enjoyed it less than any of the other three books this week for sure. I would probably give it about three and a half stars. It's not a bad book. I, entered, I thought it was entertaining. I think if you are a huge Deadpool or Wolverine fan, you probably will enjoy this. If you are not huge into those characters, um, it's fine. Like, I'm I'm in particular, I, so I'll be blunt, like, I enjoy Deadpool in small doses. I cannot take him regularly, um, but I know there are people who love him, though. And then Wolverine is a character I enjoy for the most part. Um, I think he's pretty cool. Um, coming to it from my perspective, I kind of skipped this. Um, and I don't want to say it's, like, bad, because it's not bad, but, um... It's 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 fine entertaining book, but it's nothing deeper. Um, just a hack and slash, which maybe that's all this book should be. Maybe it's it's hitting exactly what it should be. So it is fine. Yeah, it is kind of like the end of X Men Origins Wolverine. Um, we'll see. Maybe they'll make fun of that. Um, I imagine they will. But uh, yeah, it was a fine book. Uh, totally fine.